Hey queens, hey queens, hey queens. So I am going to show you today my new plants for the month of April that I received, right? I went to Home Depot and first I'm going to tell you that I went to Home Depot and I bought two plants and then I bought, wait, did I get this one from Home Depot? No, I bought two plants from Home Depot and then I got one, two, three, four, five plants from Etsy. And I have one more coming from Etsy. So this is all of April's um, plant haul spree. <laughs> so I want to first go off to thank all of the queens that have been following me, that have been liking, sharing, and subscribing to Growing With Me, Growing With Selena channel. And it's been growing, it's been flourishing. I've been getting lots of comments about plants that you guys have, you queens have. And listen, I'm learning as well from you, right? Um, remember that our environment makes us all different because look, we all are all different individual queens, right? So our environment makes us all different. I live on a beach. You may live in a city, you know? So at the end of the day, you may have um, buildings blocking your windows where at the end of the day, my windows are nothing but sin coming in throughout my windows, right? So in saying that, we just have to take um, these tips and these hacks with a grain of salt, right? And just love on your baby plants, right? So with saying that, I'm going to show you the month of April's plant haul shopping from Home Depot and from Etsy. <laughs> so first, I wanna show you which ones? Okay, I'm gonna show you my Calathea family, my Etsy shopping spree, okay? So, in Etsy, I went and bought me a, just let me make sure, because I think this is from Home Depot, because it came with this pot. Oh, I got, I think I lied to you guys, you queens. I did, this is from Home Depot. I have another plant. Well, I forgot I had this baby too. So I did get them from Home Depot. So this baby's from Home Depot, this baby's from Home Depot. So, so five from Etsy, four from Home Depot. Okay, um, so we're gonna start with Home Depot first because I wanna put this baby away um, because I'm still treating her and I think she may have spider mites. So whatever those little white little fuzzy things are, if you do know what they are, and I just don't know what I'm calling them, I think I call everything spider mites now. Um, just drop it in the comment section below <laughs> and let me know what are those little furry white things because I have a um, a magnifying glass and I just look all through my plants and what if I ever see that, and I only seen that as of like now never seen that before so that's why i don't know exactly if it's spider mites or not and if you do know just drop it in the comment section and let me know <laughs> what it is okay but our first plant we are starting with our syngonia pink neon syngoniums and i realized that i love syngoniums I love syngoniums. I'm still finding out what plants I love. I'm still finding out my plant love. Oh my gosh, this is nuts. But look at this baby. Isn't she so gorgeous? <gasps> yeah, see that. Yeah, look at the foliage on there. Look at that. And this is the, um, I think this is the more mature part. They grow in, like, the babies. Look at, look at all these growing points. 
if you look all down there oh my gosh look at that the babies right there babies all of these babies down here right so i'm treating it right now with neem oil and insecticide um i did have another plant when i picked this plant up the other day i only had this plant for two days now when i picked this plant up the other day i picked it up and i had this and a so we had came to home depot and we fell in love with this beautiful syngonium it's called red syngonium i think it is syngonium pink neon look at how beautiful this is and look at the growing points and the babies that's coming in beautiful and then we got another syngonium a pink just gorgeous different plant right i put the other plant back um because it was a white syngonium um and i'm going to show you the next one that i ran into and fell in love with i just want to look through this yeah this is being treated because when i got into the car i realized this is why it's so important to check your plants when you are shopping at a big box store or anywhere technically okay because they're taking care of so many plants just like how i'm taking care of plants right but my plants are more personal to me i check them constantly for spider mites i treat them consistently and all sorts of things um so it's very important to check your plants not just to see oh they're so pretty i look at I look at it to see if it's um the root system and all sorts of things, but I did not look to see if it had any bugs, which was my mistake, but I can't complain. I can handle it and I'm keeping it inside of the bathtub right now. It's inside of my bathtub right now and I'm just going to just do that and just keep spraying it down. And what I'm spraying it with is Again, I said this in another video, the Captain Jack's dead bug and the neem oil. And I put it inside of this bottle. Get you any spray bottle, right? And I just spray the whole plant. I spray the whole plant um, and I just do this consistently. I did this for two days so far. I did it this um, this rising when I woke up. I sprayed it and then because the sun was out, I put it outside. Um, now I just put it back inside and now I'm gonna put it in the tub now that we're done with this plant. And I'm going to make sure tonight before I go to bed, I spray this plant really good. Underneath it, the top of it, in between, and the soil because realize when you're dealing with infestation it could be inside of the soil as well because i just got this plant from the big box store i don't want to disrupt it because it's coming into a new environment i'm already disrupting it by putting it into a new environment and doing so much spray changing it from its spots that i don't want it at right so these are the things that we have to think about when we're shopping for a plant. Know that, number one, check it. Check to see if it has any bugs. And sometimes you can't see bugs, so okay. But once you check to see if it has any bugs, then that's when you just need to make sure that you know the environment it needs to be in. What kind of environment? Does it need high humidity? Does it need more lighting? Does it need filtered light? Where would you want to put it? Sometimes we do have to move it, but because I'm moving it so often, I'm not really giving it a chance to just settle in into my environment yet. So this is the pink syngonium um, neon. It's just gorgeous. So we're gonna come back for an updated video to see how this plant is going and growing, okay?
Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? This is the Syngonium. I think this is the white one. This is the Nephritis. 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 Don't get me quoting. I can't quote it. I'm sorry. But isn't she pretty? I think this is the white Syngonium. Yeah, this is the white Syngonium. So, remember when I said that I picked up another plant? This wasn't that plant. It was the same genre. This was the it was the white Syngonium, but the other white Syngonium had holes. Yes. Okay? And I'm going to show you a clip of the video of that um of me finding it in Home Depot and before this one arrived because when I swung back around the plant section, OMG, the shipment came. They was just pulling the carts inside of the stores and I was just waiting. I was excited. Me and another lady, we was excited. And when I seen this plant at the top of one of the carts, I didn't want nothing else. There was nothing else I needed to look at. This is what I wanted. So, of course, I'm short. The other lady was tall. She said, do you want me to get it? Because they were taking too long for me. And I was with my husband. My husband not going to have any type of patience. She went and got the plant for me. Isn't she lovely? Sagonium. Um, I think this is the white one. It's called Nephitis. Nephititis. Hmm. I'm in love with Sigoniums. Look at that. And this is what I mean by this is the um before the plant gets mature, the plant looks like this. It comes out like this. You see how the, like it has two ears. You see this one? Like how it has two ears. Yeah, it goes like this with the two ears and then it gets mature to look like this. It is so cool. And these kind of plants right here, so go ahead, I'm gonna put this down because it is heavy. And those plants, the Sigonium plants, they like, um, I hear high humidity, right? Um, and when you say, it depends on what high humidity, humidity is in your environment. High humidity in my environment, because my, my environment is already high in humidity. So right now, my humidity is 80%. Um, I have the heat on because it is my heat is on 65. The heat on in this house right now, the overall heat is 70. Outside, it's raining right now. So these plants in this section is getting 80% of humidity and I have a humidifier right here, but it's not on. I had it on earlier for like 30 minutes, I turned it off. Yesterday, I had it on for like 10, 15 minutes, turned it off. I always like to kick the humidity up a little bit more. So humidity in my household is between 70 to 80%. High humidity for you could be 50%. This is why you have to take what you hear and learn about your plants with a grain of salt because your environment could be so much different than mine, hers, his theirs you know um now i bought this one from home depot and i'm still trying to get the gist of this one i think i'm about to put this inside of my bathroom because it wants high humidity um i have it on my kitchen table right now so maybe i just need to move it from my kitchen table to like somewhere over here I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna think I'm gonna move it to something somewhere over here. So this is a Calathea 
I'm trying to figure out which one this one is. I'm learning all of these Calatheas right now. So I can't give you the right name until I actually get used to this. But I will drop down the name on the bottom section of the screen. So you will know exactly which Calathea this is. Because they some of them look similar. But I have to give it more light. Yeah. Because you look at the back side of this. You see how the red pigmentation is? So you have a plant that looks like this, like a, the snake one or a rattlesnake, whatever it's called. And it's pointy and it goes up and it has like markings like this. Isn't she beautiful? Look at her. That is gorgeous. And look at the back of it. Like it's paint brushed on. And look at the cluster of that. Right? So Calatheas like high humidity right and that's why i have some of them so clustered over here um next to my humidifier they like high humidity but not bright light um when you learn about a plant and where it comes from then you understand how it should be grown right this i think this is a tropical yeah this tropical plant basically likes to be under trees so think about it, how a tree is. Like I have a tree over here, my ficus tree. And a plant like this would be under the tree and the tree would be giving it shade. So it likes bright and direct light with a little bit of shade. Or if you have it in your window, think of your blinds a little bit tad open, not fully open. You know, so if you're going to have your blinds fully open, just move your Calatheas back a little bit more, right? Now, if you see the pink starting to fade, some like this one, right? If you see the pink on the back starting to fade a little bit, that means that it probably needs a little bit more light. But this is a new leaf, the newest leaf that came up. So it probably needs a little bit more light with that. But the brownness on the edge of the tips, let me see if I can find, like right here, you see that one? The brownness on the edge of the tip means that it needs to be watered. Um, it needs a little bit more humidity or it's in too much of a bright light. Okay. I feel like I had watered it. I just watered it today. I'm trying to see if I got too much water at the bottom. You never want your plants to sit in water. Yep, it's sitting in water. I know I felt something. You never want your plants to sit in water, really. You can see that. Yeah. Let me pour that out. Plants sitting in water can cause root rot. Just period. We don't want that. And then you lose a whole plant. Gabach. Gabach. And if you basically catch root rot on your plant, then it's time to propagate it. And I have a propagation video that I will leave in details in the um, description. So this one, this baby right here, I've been wanting for a very long time right and this is a skin daptus i have a skin daptus but this is the skin daptus moonlight i think it's called again because i will i will butcher these names <laughs> i will put the book um the names on the bottom of the screen um but this plant is just so gorgeous to me the weight of the no this is a silver one silver moonlight whatever I, I won't leave the description. Um, but look at it. Look at the silver skin daptus. Silver skin daptus. That's what it's called. You see how the leaves are? Look how they are silvery. Right? It's time for me to change the... Um, you see that yellowy on it? Because it's time for me to change the soil because it has no soil. Look at this, guys. You see how it's nothing but roots? 
it's really nothing but roots. And it's time for me to water it. Yeah, it's time for me to water it. So. I was waiting for tomorrow because tomorrow is raining. And that rainwater. I know that rainwater is good. But this thing is really dry. Okay. So, and then plus it's going on the baby. Look at that. And this kind of plant, they love bright light. Because look at this. This is the same, not the same one, but this is a Sylvan Scadaptus. And they like bright light. They like high humidity. That's why it's closer to the humidifier over here. Um, over there, that one is bright under the light and it has a humidifier over there. So these plants right here are gorgeous babies that are easy to take care of. And you see it was just dry. So I don't have to fully give it the attention that you think that you have to give your plants all the time. That's not with this one. Okay, so now we're moving on to Etsy plants okay etsy so which ones i was fighting with myself and then i made a mistake with one of my plants by getting the same plant so this plant and this plant are the same exact plants okay These are the Calatheas. Um, what is the name of these again? Every time I get on a video, I can never remember the name, but when I'm looking at my plants, I just know the name like, yep, that, 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 that. But now I cannot think of the name. I just can't. But they came from two different suppliers. One came from, um, let me see if the name is on there, actually. Nope. But one came from a different supplier. And they were really good with me because before um, they mailed off my plant, I asked them to send me a picture of the plant that I would be getting. I asked them, was it fertilized? They answered those questions. They were very attentive to um, my my needs. Um, and I think, is this a kind of idea? Is this a Sinanthi? Well, they're in the same giant family, basically. But this is, oh, it's a prayer plant. It closes and, and folds back up. It's like prayer hands. So right now, because it's open, it's receiving the light. When it closes up at nighttime, it shows basically that it received enough light or something like that. I don't know, it can't quote me. I just hear that, but I never really did my research. But this is a plant that closes and opens on its own. Um, that last one that I showed you, um, the peacock plant, it does the same thing, right? It's called a peacock plant. You see how I just looked at the plant and knew the name right off the back? Yeah, but when I'm actually talking about the plant, green, lemon, lime, marantha, it's that one. This is the red marantha. See, I knew it. <laughs> so this is the red marantha. And then this one was from Sisters something. What was it called? Three Sisters Plants off of Etsy. This one came from Three Sisters Plants and this one came from a different supplier. This one is so much fuller, but I'm not mad at this one neither because you could tell that this one is like stretched out long because it probably had a light right over the head and it's reaching up while this is more clustered. But you see how the hand, the like they're more upward while this is more outward. Pray hands. It is so beautiful. And the back of it has the red markings. And if you notice these red markings are going away, you probably either have to give it a little bit more light or maybe pull it away from the light because they do not like bright light. Like I said, they like to be under trees 
shade it up. So that's why I keep it inside this cubby. Normally this light, this light is not on. So um, I really don't have to move it away from anywhere. This light that it gets from the um, grow lights and the grow light right here that just spots on it, it's enough light that it gets. You don't want to turn the leaves. The leaves are sensitive. Um, you just want it to just keep growing. And actually, there's a plant baby growing on this one right now. You see how it grows in? They grow in folded. They grow in folded. And then this is what it does. You see how it's trying to come unfold it? Look at that. So now we're going to our green Maranta. We just did our red Maranta. This is our green Maranta. Look how beautiful it is. It normally doesn't stay over there, right? It normally stays in my kitchen on top of my water dispenser. And my kitchen is very humid because we're always boiling something, we're always cooking, and it's on top of a water dispenser. How better can you get of humidity? Um, and then the light that it gets from the kitchen windows, and I have big kitchen windows, and I have a sunroof in my kitchen, it is getting an um, it's getting amazing, amazing lighting. Like it's not too strong, but it's enough for this. This one can get a little bit more lighting than the Red Maranta because it doesn't have any markings on the back. But if it does get too much lighting, you're going to see things like this, right? Burning and stuff like that. You don't want that. And this one feels more, it feels velvety. Oh, let me see the other one. Oh, the, the Red Maranta and the Green Maranta feel so velvety. So beautiful. I knew I love these. And then they got another baby. This one just grew in. And then look, there's another baby growing in right there. I don't know if you can see it. See? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it must be in an amazing spot because it's growing its babies. Let me check the soil. Most likely have to water it tomorrow or something. We'll see. I don't want to get any brown spots. So, listen, I'm not complaining. She's not complaining. We just want to keep winning and being successful. Last but not least, we have our. Listen, is she a beautiful? Our Calathea. No, this is not the last one. I apologize, because we got this big baby behind us. But our Calathea watermelon. She is a lovely, look at her. When the new leaves grow in, they come in so light. She can take a little bit more light than the other Calatheas and Sanethes that I told you about because she is more she's thicker the other ones were thinner and leaf but she is much thicker and leaf um but she is still prone to spider mites i don't know what it is with the calatheas and synapses bugs just attract to them but that's also if you have the conditions at the right um in the right environment and stuff like that then giving it the elliptical um humidity and the right lighting you won't probably have to worry about that probably um because i still hear stories of people have um their plants in greenhouses and they get spider mites and all sorts of things like that so just be on top of checking your plants um because if you know that a plant is prone to uh, uh, what bugs uh, can come to these plants always check the back of it underneath it check the top of it check look at the soil get a magnifying glass or whatever it is 
but be on top of your plants because it will be worth it in the end because if you miss any bugs that are on here or any of your plants then it can be a thing of you might just have infestation and don't know it the plants that look healthy could be dying and the next thing you know they're dead root rot and all sorts of things so just stay on top of your plants but she is a beauty i had to change her pot because look at the thick petioles how thick they are So, and I keep it right next to the syngonium because the humidifier is right here and when it blows out, it blows out this way. And then I have a fan right here so it can circulate the humidity in the right area. But like I said, like right now, the humidity is 79%. So it drops up and down from 79 to 80%. So just stay on top of your humidity so it's still high humidity in this house like i said my humidity in this household runs from 70 to 80 percent so now i'm going to show you my last plant of april's haul. it's still not my last plant oh it's still not my last plant i have another plant So we have this Sydney Luber Luberside Luber. I don't know how to say it properly. Luber 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 Luber. So obviously I can't pick this up. I have to do um put a little bit of more dirt at the top of it because the roots is at the top that's showing. Um. It's in this big old pot. It is a beauty. Um, I'm still fighting and learning, growing with this plant because she is difficult. She's very difficult. She, look at the dryness. I thought I had it packed down and then I had to cut off a leaf that yellowed. So then I overwatered. But I thought that because she was in my terracotta, remember terracotta pots, they dry out because they're so porous. So they dry out faster. I thought that she dried out fast and it was time to water her. But I must have overwatered her or I probably burned her with um, giving her too much fertilizer. So I'm not gonna fertilize her for a couple of weeks. I'm just gonna regular water her. I'm gonna wait until she needs water. I just watered her like two days ago. So she'll be okay. Um, I'm not gonna water her until like five days from now to get her back on schedule. I just sprayed her with some insecticide and neem oil. You have to stay on top of that. She doesn't have anything, but we always have to stay on top of making sure that we're taking care of our plants and doing preventative actions. Someone was detected at the front door. Now, she does not get a lot of bright lights. Normally, with variegations like these, you want to get your plant to have um, higher light. But because she prefers a little bit of a shaded light, she gets, what can I say? she gets um the grow light so it's not shaded but it's the grow light and the grow light is the different color so it's not the white light it's the colorful grow light the led kinds you know and she loves that light there was hasn't been any problems so far the only problem i had i said because i probably just overwatered um, which I'm not too worried about it. Normally when you overwater, you can think about um, root rot and stuff, stuff like that, like I said before, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna pull back on the watering. Um, I think, like I said, it could have been fertilizing um, that gave her that yellow leaf, but her babies are growing and good. She has a new leaf right here. Let me see if I can bring you guys in. 
she has a new baby right here, new baby right there. She has new babies down here. So she is growing. Look at this one. Needs to, she has one that has to unfurl right here. She has one right here that has to unfurl. Furl. So she's growing. So I'm not too worried about that yellow leaf that um, I encountered because she's gonna just flourish. And I have her right underneath the humidifier. I have her right underneath the humidifier. So, and also because I said that these are prone to um, bugs, I basically keep her away from my other plants. So I give them space, that's what I'm saying. Like I know you see them next to plants, but I give, I make sure that there's enough space in order for my plants to survive and flourish. I'm just checking my plant because I see some things, but it's not any spiders, it's not bugs. That is spider mites. Okay, so that one is spider mites or whatever it is. So I'm just gonna spray it. It's not infested. It's not infested with spider mites, but it has a little bit of um, webbing. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to do is spray it, move it um, away from my collection, and I'm going to spray it and treat it for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to also treat the soil. The soil is new. If it was old, like my other plant that I did in my um, other video with my ficus um, rubber plant, then basically um, you want to chop up the plant or get rid of that plant, okay? Because it's infested. This plant is not infested, but I do see a little bit of something, um, which is not terribly going to harm the plant, but we want to tackle it now, okay? I'm very anal about that. I don't want nothing to get to any of the new plants. I don't want anything to get to these plants. And also, when you get new plants, right? I had all of these plants away from the collection until, until I got them, um, made sure that they were good that they weren't going to bring anything to my other plants, right? Um, you just wanna make sure that they're safe, that they're not gonna bring any other bugs, that nothing's gonna come out the soil because these plants have been growing next to, clustered with other plants, dry plants and um, humidity plants, old plants, new plants, right? So when I purchased this Syngonium, um, the other day, it not the other day, but yeah, basically the other day, um, I left it away out of dormancy for a while, but I inspected, inspected, inspected it, I sprayed it, treated it, and then I put it over here because it needs the humidity. But I'm always going to keep an eye on it, right? But my other plants, like the ones from Etsy, I made sure that I kept it, kept it away from my other plants and kept it in dormancy where 
It wasn't next to any of my other plants. It wasn't touching. It wasn't even in the same area. So my living room, it was just my living room with my plants that were familiarized with each other compared to, hey friend, I'm coming to bring you something that you don't want, you know, or <laughs> you know. But anyways, just make sure that you are bringing in new plants and separating them from your older plants. Just to be on the safer side, you could do it for um, a week, you could do it for two weeks, right? Um, just to see what's gonna be coming out of that soil, just to see if anything's developing on the backside of the plants, like how I just seen um, a little something on this plant, right? If that plant is inside of the store for so long, and it's just getting infested, then basically, okay, okay, okay. I have a puppy, Prince, I have a puppy. She's a baby, um, but you don't want it to bring it into where it's getting infested into your home around other plants, right? You wanna say hi? Hi, hi, yeah, hi, yeah. Say hi to the people. Say hi. <laughs> She's like, no. She. I've been showing her the mirror um, to show herself. And she's like, stares at herself. And then she goes crazy. But she is Miss Star. Hi, Miss Star. Say hi, plant world. I know. I know. But, um... That is it basically. Oh no. Now this is my last plant. This is my last plant. <clears throat> Let me see if I can hold her in you at the same time. I'm gonna take it out the cash pole pot. All of these pots are not in decorative pots. They are still in the nursery pots. And I'm not taking them out right now until they really acclimated into my um, environment, you know? It could take a long while. Um, but if it feels like the other one, the Scandactus that I bought, it needs to be, um, to be repotted. I've had it since the beginning of this month and it's acclimated. It's growing, it's flourishing, it's acclimated. <laughs> it jumped right in. Um, this is the pink, pink princess, I want to say, but I could, no, this is the pink princess. Look at these beautiful pink colors. Do you see that? Now look at this. Wait, you see that baby growing? She's like, that's not your voice. You see that baby right there growing? Right, yep. That'd be right there. Look at that. But look at that pink. That pink is everything. I know. I know. And then we have a, one down here that's like a black and white. Cherish. Come in. So yes, this is the pink princess. Okay. This is the pink philodendron princess. I love this one. So look at that pink. You see that pink? You see the splashes of pink on there? Huh? Look at the splashes on there. I have toys in my room. Look at that. And then look at this leaf right here. She is a beauty. She is gorgeous. That pink is pink. I'm in love with it. And then when you go further down, I don't know if you can see that. Do you see that white? Well, it's not white, it's pink. 
it's really light, 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 light pink. To you, it's white. But this is a really light pink, but that is gorgeous. Do you see that? And then there's another one coming in. And then there's another baby coming in with pink splashes on it. Oh, this is just a gorgeous plant that loves high humidity and loves good lighting. Like not, I don't think any plants really, I can't say that, Monstera plant likes good direct light. My Monstera delicioso is like good direct light. They do. So I can't say that, but if you put it outside from being inside for the winter and then put it in the summertime outside your Monstera Delicioso. If you put your, um, your Monstera Delicioso outside after being inside, then you will, it will burn because you have to take baby steps in transitioning it from inside to outside very slowly into that lighting. So every, so put it into the light, direct sunlight for maybe an hour and then move it into some shade where it's gonna get shaded light, right? Um, or, and then the next week, the second week, move it in the, to the sunlight a little bit longer. So that's how you can transition your plants into needing and wanting more lighting um, when they like it like that. Because I know my Monstera Deliciosos, they love bright light, okay? Um, my Burly Marks, that's what we'll do another video on that because we're about to propagate her, right? We're about to cut her up and put her into some Lekka, put her into some water and then Lekka. We're about to do that. She loves it. Um, but this princess, right here pink princess um it's just life it's giving me life i keep it right here inside of this cash pole pot which i have to super glue at the bottom and it is ne next to the humidity humidifier and then right above here at the top is um i have a grow light a big grow light and then I have these grow lights that come on at nighttime and it's coming right here. So this is why, if you can really see why this pink is pinking. Y'all can't see what I can see because this pink is really pinking. It's pinking, pinking all the way, all the way. It's giving me life. It really is. But that is it for April's I'm trying to make sure I'm not going to say, oh, another one. <laughs> that is it for April's um, plant haul. Um, and I don't think we're going to have a main one. Because <laughs> we went nuts. Oh, so next month, that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you the one that hasn't come yet. So we do have one more plant that hasn't arrived yet. It is a beauty. It is another Syngonium, but she is a beauty. She needs her own introduction. She, need her, she needs her own channel. She, need, she needs her own video, okay? So listen, you queens, make sure you're subscribed make sure you share this live because you may have a queen sister that is saying you know what i wanted these plants but i thought that they were too difficult or i hear so much things about them and i broke it she broke it down for you well that is what i'm here for i'm here to just break it down for you for you to understand and learn your environment because we are all different, we all live different, right? I like a nice warm house because my kids, they ain't having it. Um, but listen, let's keep growing, let's keep learning, let's keep planting. And I do this because I really love it. I love, it's my passion. 
to watch my plants grow. I love watching them grow small. I love getting the big ones, watching them grow even bigger. So there's none of them that are exhibit from me. I know some queens love to watch it grow from a baby. And I love that. Sometimes I have no patience and I just want the big one, you know? <laughs> But that is the part of growing, learning, caring to keep it big because that's the challenging part when you start from the more mature plant. So queens, thank you, thank you, thank you for like, subscribing, and sharing this channel, this video. And if you have any suggestions on what I should do with... um these spider mites or if they are spider mites right the little white little things they're not fuzzy i don't know what i'm really seeing so i could be wrong it may not be anything but i know the one in there from home depot yeah that's something because so i put that away um this one that i've seen it may not be nothing but i did see um on one of the leaves a little cluster of um a webbing A little clustering cluster of a webbing on one of them so I'm gonna just make sure um, and it was like a little bit of white stuff so I'm just gonna make sure if you do have any suggestions or the name of what that is just drop it in my comment section and let me know please 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 and listen Queens thank you for watching growing with Selena and make sure everything you do you do it the right way <laughs>